Now, the papers, of course, this morning are absolutely chock full of Brexit this, Brexit that, fishing talks. Fishing doesn't matter. Fishing does matter. Fishing is a very small part of the GDP of this country, uh, but it's very, very totemic. And that's why we have to be very careful. Uh, Merkel and Macron in final bid for Brexit deal is what it says uh, on the front page of The Times. The Guardian uh, breakthrough on fishing rights as Brexit talks hanging about. I've got one question for all those people who say that fishing really doesn't matter and it doesn't mean much to the overall overarching width and and breadth of our cultural reunion or otherwise with the European Union. Well, if it doesn't matter so much, why does everybody keep talking about it? And if it doesn't matter so much, why on earth can't they just make an agreement about it? Let's talk to John Rental and get some common sense on board. John, a very good morning to you. <laughs> good morning, Mike. Now, uh, um, there are many questions here, but the first thing I thought of as I was talking to Martin, my producer, this morning, I said, you know, it, it feels a bit like that time you came and sat down with us uh, in the tent in Westminster, the tent of common sense. And I actually said to you, because we'd been doing it for so long, I've actually run out of questions. And I feel a bit <laughs> like that. I feel a bit like that this morning. You know, what on, earth, that. What on earth can we talk about? I mean, do, do you not remember the deadlocked parliament? That yes. Couldn't agree? absolutely anything everything that uh, was put to it it voted down yeah. and that just went on and on and on for months and months and months i mean so that's the background to to where we are today um i mean at least you know something does have to be decided between now and the 31st of december right uh, nobody knows nobody knows or nobody's saying what the real deadline is right uh, i mean because you you know you've got to get the european parliament has to sign it off you've got to get it translated into all the languages and you've got to get it legally scrubbed uh, and nobody knows how long it takes to do all those things with a with, with a document but you're absolutely right um i mean i cannot understand why you cannot get uh, some grown-ups in a room to sort out a sensible compromise on mm. fish uh, and as for the idea that you know the UK wants to subsidise uh, its exports to the EU or anywhere else, uh, that's absurd. So the, uh, a deal should be should be possible to do. Yeah, I mean, I would have thought, and I know this might sound revolutionary, but the most important thing for both sides is to keep things pretty much as they are, right? I mean, there's no yep. real incentive for anyone to change the way that we do business with the European Union, or indeed for them to change the way that they do business with us. It would make an awful lot more sense to just keep everything the same. Well, uh, yes, except that then we would have uh, we would have privileged access to, uh, the, to to the biggest market in the world. Um, yeah, but which we, would... we but which we which we don't really use as a biggest market in the world, though, because much of our trade or most of our trade is not with the EU. No, no, most of our no, the largest the largest single block of, of, of trade is with the EU. They are mo they are our most important uh, partner. Uh, and you know, up till now, we've had to pay for the for, for the privilege of access to that market. Right. We've had to pay a net contributions. They don't want to give us that that access uh, completely free of charge. So uh, that's what the negotiations are about. And I don't see why you sh it, it should be possible to to, to reach some kind of uh, accommodation. Mm. But uh, there's obviously a large amount of posturing, breast beating, and uh, showing off going on just before the uh, before the two sides finally uh, compromise yes. and the question is compromise more yeah, but exactly. I mean, one of the reasons why we've left the European Union, though, is because we believe that having to pay to access their market is unreasonable. Therefore, we don't want to pay to access their market. Therefore, we no, want to I, pay. Therefore, I, we want I, to pay less to access the market, or <laughs> they can get lost. No, the reason we're leaving is because people don't want to be part of a European uh, superstar. Yeah, but that's part of it, though. But that's part of it. You know, it's, it's like being part of a club uh, where they come round every month and and threaten to burn your house to the ground unless you give them a load of money. No, but I mean, whether we whether we're part of it or not, we still we st our, our our economy is going to be dominated by uh, this huge market uh, right on our doorstep, and you know we will want to sell uh, goods and services in that market, and we will have to abide by the rules of that market if we if we're to do so. But the question, the, the point of leaving is so that we're not part of the political the political structures. Yeah, uh, but we could we could we should be able to. Re to negotiate some kind of uh, some kind of relationship. I mean, this this should not be beyond the wit of, uh, of, no. of human. No. Well, I, I likened it when I was speaking to Julie Hartley Brewer uh, just earlier before we came on um, to a divorce. You know, and I mean, you may or may not have been through one of those. I have been, um, and in the end. 
it feels for me today, and this is why I'm about to sue Emmanuel Macron because he's made all these horrible memories flood back into my brain. Uh, it's a bit like standing outside the house that you that you paid for, that you used to live in with your wife, uh, waiting for her to hand you a couple of bags uh, of, of rubbish, which in fact are your belongings for the last 20 years. Uh, and you leave, uh, hopefully relatively amicably, uh, with a promise to see the kids next weekend. I, well, I think there's, 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 there's an emotional truth in that, which is that it is... Uh, it's a rather sad occasion and it is it is um, it's damaging and humiliating for the European Union to lose yes. uh, such an important member. Yeah. I mean, that that is something that I think we in Britain uh, overlook. We don't understand the extent to which we've hurt them by saying, no, we don't want to be part of your club. Right. Uh, and, and we're off. And that actually diminishes the European Union. And it means that they they feel emotionally uh reluctant to give us um to give us a good deal and you know you can you can understand that well you can but they should be more responsible surely than that as an institution rather than as uh, a spurned partner you know it's not we don't expect them to behave uh, like some kind of crazed divorcee uh, or a bloke who's who's who wants to wreak havoc on the relationship just because it's all broken down the point is you're supposed to act like a grown up it's supposed to be a grown up organization but the more that you look at it the more reason uh, you think to leave it well, I think we, we British are not exactly behaving like grown ups either. I mean, you know, there is a there is a, a, a streak of arrogance in the in the UK uh, posture, which is that we want to have our cake and eat it. As you as you just said, you, you know, why can't we just keep things as they are yeah. and, and just not not pay? Our yeah, but that's in terms of the trade not, I'm talking not, about, not in terms of everything else. No, we, yeah, but, um, you know, we are. Uh, threatening to tear up the withdrawal agreement, um, which is which is quite a hard line uh, negotiating position. You can understand why they don't like it. Yeah, but they don't like it. But I can tell you this. If I went to the owners of, uh, of Verve Clico and said, look, I will continue to buy as much champagne from you as I did last year, and I'm very happy to pay the same amount of money. What do you think they would say? Oh, no, because you have left the European <laughs> Union, we must charge you an extra £10? No, they wouldn't. <laughs> No, but that's the that's the that's the old BMW. But that's, and no, but that's the re, that's the reality, is it not? No, it isn't, Mike, because that's not how it works. If if that was how it was how it worked, we would have had a deal by now. This was the myth that uh, that some of the Brexiteers uh, peddled, which was that the BMW owners and the Prosecco sellers yeah. would insist that their governments do a deal because they want to carry on selling to us. Uh, that hasn't happened. And the reason it hasn't happened is because Europe actually does feel a sense of solidarity and, and, and a sense of, of having been insulted by the British in wanting to leave. So therefore, they're going to stick together and they're going to they're going to drive an extremely no. hard bargain. No, I don't believe to... that. I don't believe that for a second, because the people who buy the most champagne in the world from France are we in Britain, okay? And so therefore yeah. the people the who run the people who run the champagne business in France will not want to lose that market. Well you say that, but you know, have you heard them take to the streets and demand the uh, a sellout deal by the EU uh, to the, to well, the no, UK. Well, no, everybody does take to the streets, John. The point is, is that they are business people. They're not interested really in Brussels. There's plenty they're of people French who live... They're, they're, take to the well, no, the French do take to the streets, but the French owners do not take to the street. The French farmers take to the street. That's a very different matter. They always have and they always will. But, you know, the French are not just one amorphous mass of people. The bottom line for me, John, uh, is that most businesses in uh, all countries of the world detest government detest parliaments, detest any kind of regulation because they would rather have a free market to do as and what they wish. And that's why they're not saying anything because they don't want to be penalised by their own governments. Yeah, I, I think we're, we're well past that point now. I mean, I think, you know, the time for, for French and German businesses to make their views known to their governments uh, was, was over the past year or so. Uh, and they, they simply have not behaved in the way that some of the more ardent Brexiteers in this country expected them to. Uh, they've left it to the governments to negotiate uh, the terms of our exit, uh, and we're now in the f in the final few days, and it's it's going to be it's going to be up to the politicians in Brussels and and, and London to, uh, to to sort that out. I mean, I don't think the the the, the business interests in in the EU are going to have much say. 
No, I don't think so either. Um, but I mean, the more we hear that there is likely to be a deal or not likely to be a deal, the less we know, really, don't we? I mean, I was listening to, uh, I think, the vice president of the European Parliament yesterday who was saying that, uh, yes, of course, they would come back and convene a special session of Parliament in between Christmas and New Year if the deal was brokered. Uh, and they would sign it off quite happily, regardless of what it was, on the grounds that anything that the negotiators negotiated would be fine with them. Yeah. I mean, that is that is how the European politics Which kind of works. makes a mockery of the whole parliamentary idea, doesn't it? Well, yeah, except, I mean, we, you know, our parliament doesn't have to sign off the deal. Um, so... Well, the House of know. Lords won't ever sign it off, will it? I mean, the House of Lords just go, no, we want to stay, we want to stay in <laughs> Europe, no! <laughs> no, well, they, I mean, our parliament gets to sign it off after the deal is done. Right. Which, uh, doesn't 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 strike me as as, as more democratic than the European. Well, that would be things, because but... we had a referendum in which we voted to leave, and also yeah. the government who won in December, a long way ago as it was, uh, were voted in purely and utterly to get Brexit done. Yeah, fair enough. And and but the way the European politics works is that if the European Commission and if European uh, heads of government agree to, uh, to to a deal, then Parliament is. The European Parliament is likely to as well. I mean, they would be very unlikely to throw it out at the last minute. Yeah. Um, I mean, but we ought to be thankful for coronavirus in the sense that the European Parliament has now set up these processes where they can meet and vote remotely. Uh, so they'll be able to do that at the last minute. So, yes. Well, uh, let's hope they're not going to be charging us any expenses brief. on the basis of that. <laughs> I mean, funnily enough, John, even as we speak, right, and I think this is a great metaphor for what's going on in Brussels, the fog is, 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 is moving in. And when I started this show, I could barely see across the river. Now I can't see out the window at all. So the fog is actually getting worse uh, and the murk uh, and the murkiness is getting uh, even thicker. So the idea that we can even imagine what's going to be happening over the next few days uh, is laughable, isn't it? Uh, yeah, no, but that's the problem with uh, with coming onto a show like yours is that I do not know what's going on in Brussels. I do not know what the real deadline uh, is for, for for agreeing something. I don't know how long it takes to uh, to, to to translate a a long uh, treaty text and uh, and, and legally uh, scrub it. Um, so I don't know when that when the real deadline is. I don't know if if it seriously has to be done by Thursday, which is when the European. Mm heads of government meet in, in Brussels or whether there's scope for pushing it into next week, in which case, you know, this is just going to go on and on. Well, I mean, one thing we've learned, you and I, from our experience of last year, sitting in that tent endlessly and for hours on end, and even on, especially on a Saturday morning, if you remember, the Oliver Letwin day, um, when we thought something was going to happen and then nothing happened and we all went home as if it was Friday. Um, we literally, uh, every single deadline that has ever been set has not been a deadline. No, that's true. Uh, but I mean, that has always been the case with uh, with European <laughs> negotiations. I did think that, you know, all these these wise old old folk who said, you know, like a year ago, they said, well, of course, this will this will be decided the 25th hour of the uh, of, of the final day. These European negotiations yes. always go down last minute. I thought they would. I thought I thought that just sounded like a smart thing to say in a, in a, in a radio interview. Mm. But actually, it turns out to be true. And that is the way these things are going to be done. I mean, 95 percent of this treaty is it has has actually been drawn up, allegedly. Um, it is just the it's the last few things that need to be sorted out. And yeah. They will be sorted last minute. I mean, we my, just don't know. my overarching kind of sense of all of this is that come January, February, March, whatever, you know, it will not be any more difficult to get hold of all the things that we can get hold of now. It will not be any more expensive to get hold of all the things that we get hold of now. Um, and life will very much continue as it is now. And we, well, won't, even, we won't even notice. I, hope, I mean, I hope you're right, but I think there might well be some some blips uh, in the meantime. I mean, you can't you can't introduce new checks and uh, and controls uh, on on movements that were previously completely free without causing some uh, some queues in Kent. I wouldn't have thought. But, well, yeah, uh, but we've I, always had queues in Kent. I mean, Kent is, has been a lorry park for many years. I mean, Damien Green yesterday on Sky said that he had heard and was worried that some lo 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 uh, lorry hauliers would avoid Britain. Well, I'm sorry. If you're delivering something to Seven Oaks, you can't really avoid Britain. And if you <laughs> if you drive around in the European Union, uh, but delivering goods, you're not going to avoid the place you're supposed to bring them to, are you? No, but uh, I, I mean, I don't think anybody expected when uh, when when uh, the nation voted to leave the European Union that this this would mean uh, uh, lorries being issued with permits to enter the county of Kent. I mean, that's, yeah, that's what's, not what... Well, what's the problem? I mean, you know, you have to get a permit to leave the county of Kent at the moment. It's in tier three. 
<laughs> well, that is, that's a fair I mean, you know, if you get a permit to go to the pub, it's not open. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I mean, I do hope you're right that, you know, although there may well be temporary uh, chaos at some of the borders, um, it, it, this is assuming there is there is a deal. I mean, there will certainly yeah. be. Uh, maybe maybe it'll be like those uh, those couriers, you know, who say, you know, we tried to, 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 to leave your package, but in fact, uh, you were not in. So we've left it in Calais. <laughs> <laughs> but but, but I, you're right that by, you know, by the spring of. Of, of next year this you know the, the the problems will be sorted out uh and we'll have vaccines and we might be back to uh to something resembling uh normal life before uh before march this year well i mean that's on all counts really isn't it including coronavirus but i mean let me finally end with this um question for you keir starmer um is apparently self-isolating again having come into contact with somebody who has tested positive coronavirus now it seems to me that the polit politicians of this country are very very bad at avoiding coronavirus <laughs> boris johnson has been self-isolating keir starmer is now self-isolating for the second time now either they're not very good at obeying their own rules or the rules don't work which is it no well i think politics is one of those it's it's one of the businesses where you can't just just sit at home and, and work from home and, Why not? and not see well, because because you do have to have face to face meetings why? with people. I mean, well, why? I mean, oh. you could say that about anything, couldn't you? I mean, you and I should be sitting face to face, but we're not. So why does he have to do it? Um, because I I, I do think politics is a bit of a different business. Is I it? mean, it does involve it does involve. I mean, I suppose you have to be in the same room as somebody to stab them in the back. I suppose there is that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean. The thing is, Keir Starmer has been going into Westminster, and uh, that uh, as have I, uh, which means that he is going to be in in close proximity. I mean, not not necessarily closer than two meters, but he's going to be in proximity with his staff. I bet he hasn't been um, in the same room as Jeremy Corbyn. As, I bet he hasn't been in the same room as Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> I bet he hasn't. Um, although Jeremy Corbyn has been in uh, has been in Westminster too. I mean. It, it would be quite interesting if they bumped into each other at the in the, in the coffee queue. Well, shouldn't Corbyn uh, be shielding, given that he's over seventy? No, Jeremy Corbyn is still around. I mean, I've I've seen him in the, in, in in Westminster buying uh, buying a cup of coffee with his wife. Yeah, uh, but not at the same time as Keir Starmer is there buying a cup of coffee. Doesn't she just give uh, him some of her coffee? I mean, she runs a coffee <laughs> company. I mean, for heaven's sake, you know. Listen, um, I, all I'm worried about is that they all seem to be getting it a lot more frequently than everybody else. So clearly they're doing something wrong. Well, they're doing politics, Mike. I mean, that's 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 what they're doing wrong. And politics is a people business. Is it? If, if, I, if I can say that. Well, OK. And yeah, I mean, Westminster has always been it's been a sort of it's been a hot spot, uh, you know, as, as we as we saw uh, uh, early on in the in, in the crisis. You know, Boris Johnson went to hospital and everybody else got it. Yeah, I mean, everyone in Downing Street pretty much has had coronavirus, you know. Yeah, so they'll all be immune by now. But we, we work in the media business. I don't know what the independent's been like, but I mean, in this building here, we're very careful. And we haven't had a mass outbreak of coronavirus just because we come into the office. It, uh, no, but then as a, you know, as a politician, you do have to meet people all the time. I mean, and, and people want to be want to be spoken to face by face face to face and and you want to speak to them face face to face because that's that's how you do real negotiations i mean that's what's happening in in brussels yeah. is they have have to do it face to face and you know that's been disrupted by by people having to self-isolate to be well, fair but... given that they haven't been able to find any kind of common ground they might as well not bother well we'll see about that we'll <laughs> see we'll see what it like at the end of the week mike we shall see i shall talk to you soon john and as ever we'll hold you to account thank you very much indeed john rental chief political commentator at the independent uh very sensible man uh but doesn't really agree with me on very many things or i don't really agree with him on very many things but it's right isn't it about these politicians they're all getting coronavirus their aides are all getting coronavirus they're all self-isolating so it can't be right can it either they're not obeying the instructions and they're not social distancing or the rules don't work it can't be both can it